as someone who developed applications with Nest.js framework for many years. Recently, a development with Nest.js has presented a huge problem, and that's making me seriously question whether we should stop using this framework completely, which I will tell you why just in a second. But if you've never heard of Nest.js or never used it, and wondering how's it different compared to React or any other frameworks, then I have a full video course here that you can check it out, and I will put a link in the description below. But back to the main topic, let me tell you why exactly Nest.js has a major big problem, and we all need to be aware of this. And to start, we're going to take a look at CVE that happens on March 21st, 2025. And it was related to the Nest.js framework, which was created by the Vercel company. And you can see that the weekly downloads is over 10 million. And this issue pretty much affected every versions that we have for Nest.js. Pretty much we can say that if you're using Nest.js, you pretty much are affected by this issue. And the reason why it affected so much in the developer community is because the security level has raised to 9.1 out of 10, which is a critical security issue. And based on the metrics, you can see other than the availabilities, everything is pretty much not looking too good. Now to understand why this issue happens, let's Let's first review what is middleware in applications. Now middleware sits between the front end and the back end. So when we send a request on the front end, we can be able to call the middlewares which sits between the front end and back end. For example, when we send the request, we first might want to check to see if the data exists in the cache. If it does, then we can just respond it back without calling the back end. With back end frameworks like Nest.js, Koa, Flask, Django, they all have built-in middlewares that can be implemented in the backend. But Nest.js also has middleware built-in. But however though, using Nest.js for middleware is a bit different. Because Nest.js middleware lives in the CDN instead of the server, which makes our application much more faster compared to other backend frameworks. And let me show you how it works. So here you can see we have our client, we have our CDN and our server. And once we wrote our backend logic for our Nest.js application and deploy this to a Vercel server, the way how this works is that it will basically extract the middleware logic and be able to pass the middle where onto the Vercel CDN. Now the way how this works is that when the client sends a request to the server, it's going to pass the data or the request to the CDN and let the middleware handle this logic. Now if the middleware is able to handle this, it's going to return back to the client. If not, then it's going to pass the request to the server and let the Vercel backend handle the logic and pass the results back to the front end. That's why there's so many developers love using Vercel for their Nest.js application deployment because the middleware and data are cached in the CDN, which can be able to process the request much more faster. For example, let's say we have a client who sends a request and first is going to reach to the CDN and the CDN will basically have a middleware that check to see if the user is logged in. And if it's not logged in, then we're going to send the request back to the user. If it's already logged in, then it can be able to continue the process and be able to pass the request to the server. But however though, if our application did not focus on the middleware logic, then what happened is that it's gonna give us a timeout error. And let me show you why. Because here you can see if the user is not logged in, then we're gonna redirect the user to the login page, right? So when we send this request, it's gonna be a new request sent from the CDN to the client. But guess what? The request will be sent from the CDN to the client and the client will be redirected to the CDN again. And because the user is not logged in, it's going to continue cycle through and eventually it will give us a timeout error. So let me show you how Nest.js resolved this issue. This is what they did. They basically add a new middleware API signature. And if we were to look at the file change and in the code, you can see that there is a get fetch headers function, which takes the middleware. And what it does here is that it basically sets the headers for the request being sent from the CDN to the client. And you can see that we have a X middleware sub request which is defined in the headers, basically try to tell the future request that this is a request sent from the CDN to the client so that it prevents this timeout loop, right? But if we were to look at the middleware on how it's being used for this headers, so here you can see in this function for the run middleware. So when the client sends a request to the middleware, it's gonna trigger this run middleware function. And here you can see we have the uh, parameters, right? So we try to extract the data from the headers in the parameters. And once we extract this data, it's gonna tell if this request is sent from the CDN or the client. So we here, we basically check to see if it's actually from the middleware, right? If the request is sent from the middleware, then we're gonna skip this work. We're just gonna continue and let the request pass to the server, right? And if not, then it's going to continue and do the actual middleware work. And just to explain why they do this is because when we send a request back to the client, right? From the CDN or the middleware, right? This is the middleware. And when we try to send the request back to the client, the goal is we want to prevent this timeout loop, right? So that's why they want to set a headers in the request to the middleware to identify if the request is sent from the CDN or the client. 
But however though, that's where the problem comes in because the users can be able to change the headers and be able to bypass the middleware and go directly to the server. And that's pretty much how the problem happens. Because if we were to come back to the code, user can be able to change the request headers when they send the request to the CDN. Then we check to see if the headers contains the middleware information. And let's say if the user changed that and put the middleware information in the headers, then they can actually be able to bypass the middleware and be able to continue the logic and pass the request to the server. And if you were to look at the timeline for this problem, you can see that it happens on February 27. And you can see that it took about 17 to 20 days for them to basically create a pull request to patch this issue, which took a very long time. And let's take a look at what they fixed. And here is their fix. And honestly, I seen how they fixed this for this pull request. And I would say that it's not very smart. And here's why. You can see that this is the code that they changed for updating the middleware request header, right? This is what they fixed. And the way how they fix it is by creating another header. Okay, another header which contains random value generated using crypto and it's going to be stored in the headers. And then here, if we were to scroll down and here what we do is when the CDN receives the request, it's going to make sure that the value is the same as what it generated up here. Okay, so when they send the request, it's going to generate a random value, pass it to the request headers. And when we receive a request, right, it's going to check to see if the request header contains the same from what's generated initially. So that this will ensure that the request is validated by the CDN. Now, based on this pull request, we can see that they solved this issue, but it's not very smart. Here's why. That's because the user choose NestJS middleware because it lives in the CDN and it must be fast. And now they have to add additional logic to validate the request by the headers by using a random value generated using crypto. This is going to cost compute power and it might not be as fast as having a middleware in the server side. That's one thing. And the other part is that CDN has many edge servers around the world. Let's say our application sends a request to one CDN edge, and then later it's decided to send to another CDN edge. Then the data that's saved in this CDN edge will be lost. So when it sends a new request to another CDN edge, then it might not be the same session, which is why you can see that for this logic right here, it might not work. That's because they did not check to see if they're in the same session. Maybe it's because Vercel realized the problem that I just mentioned. If we were to look at the latest pull request that they made on March 24th, you can see that they pretty much delete any logics that they had for fixing the timeout loop, right? The timeout error loop uh, for the request validations for the headers. You can see that they delete the entire logics the entire code for those things and just letting the users to figure this out. So that's the story about the big NestJS security problem that just happened. We saw how the middleware, the part that should be fast on the CDN, that could actually be tricked by the attackers and the attackers can be able to bypass the authorizations by changing the request header. So the big question for me is, or maybe for you too, can we actually trust NestJS for our important applications? I'm not saying stop using NestJS right now, but this is a big warning sign. And please comment down below what you think and your thoughts. Should we be worried? Should we be replacing our NestJS application with a different framework? If so, which one? And of course, if you do found value in this video, please like this video and consider subscribe for more content like this. And I will post more honest videos like this in the futures for more tech reviews. So in that case, I will see you in the next one.